Hey, what's up, y'all? Blue Suit Reviews, another video. If you haven't seen my maintenance video, please go check out my maintenance video. I kind of just brushed the surface on some of the stuff that you should do to keep your car running properly over time. Preventative maintenance tips, stuff like that. And I thought it was fitting that if I did a maintenance video that you should join me on the first oil change that I'm doing for Rat Cat. First thing that I do before I start an oil change is set your parking brake and do what I do and that's I use vehicle chocks jack stand I only jack up one side of the car just to get enough space to get under there and take the the splash guard down and just so I have enough room to maneuver around it's probably a good idea to make sure your hood is open before you jack it up that's something I forgot to do but during this process I take the, the oil filler cap off and if you notice my filler cap has been painted to match all the, all the rest of the caps that are in my engine bay but normally this oil filler cap has the correct weight that you're supposed to put in your engine. Since I painted mine, even though I memorized what oil weight and type goes into the car itself, I actually will still consult the user manual, like I, like I talked about in my other video, to make sure that I'm putting the correct weight. Another thing that I do before I let any oil out is I take the dipstick out and I make sure the dipstick is cleaned off and I actually also when I take the dipstick out is I want to take a look at the oil to make sure that to at least see like how clean the oil is, is it dirty. My oil looks fairly clean but I drive my car really hard and I've had the car for almost six months now. So Again, for that added peace of mind, I'm going to go ahead and just change the oil. And at least when I, after I've done it, I know it's been done. And I don't really have to worry about it for the next six or seven months or so. Before you start this process, make sure you get something to clean up with. I would suggest shop tiles. So while I'm doing this, I use an impact driver to get the screws out faster. Uh, this is a good idea. You definitely don't need anything like this. Like you could probably use uh, uh, wrenches or whatever you got. But definitely over the years since I've been doing maintenance on vehicles, I realized that power tools are, are, are definitely something that can make the job go a lot faster. So while you're under here, there are four bolts to take the splash guard off. And for you Hellcat owners, you got to take a whole lot more stuff stuff off. So get ready for that. While I'm working, I put all of my screws in a basket. So you can you basically use anything like this is something I stole I think from my son's arts and crafts they are not using it so now I am for you for you Hellcat owners there's you take off the four screws that hold the the pan on or hold the splash guard on and then this extended front splash guard piece grab a a uh, plastic retaining clip tool and there are some retaining clips that are on the back of the guard that also have to be removed it looks like there's four of them um, I hope it's only four no there's more than four there's another one here 
Something I forgot to do is before you start trying to take the oil out, go ahead and run the car. If you haven't been driving it, warm the oil up so that it flows out faster. And now that I got these all out, so this is what the Hellcat owners have to do. So this piece right here in the back is the rear splash, splash guard and actually covers the, the oil filter and the drain plug, the oil drain plug. This piece in the front is the radiator splash guard. It's a radiator intercooler and oil cooler splash guard. And it, this covers the oil cooler drain plug. So you gotta take that front piece off. It has one, two, three, four, five screws that go across the front. It also has nine plastic retaining clips. It's got three, three that go in there, three that go in each one of those humps, and then three that go in there. If you're thinking about purchasing a Hellcat and you wanna do your own maintenance, Keep in mind that you gotta. There's some extra steps that you gotta do. That your 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 SXT, your RT, and your SRT folks or your Scat Pack folks don't have to do. So uh, if you if you want the if you want the supercharger, you gotta do supercharger work. I got the drain plug out. I'm letting the oil out of the car right now. I actually, actually uh, let the car back down to try have it sit as flat as possible while it's draining the oil because if the car is jacked up, the oil can actually pull and make a puddle inside the drain pan because the car is not flat. While we're waiting on that, we talk about what you gotta put back on the car. So you don't have to do anything for the oil cooler. You just wanna drain it. Uh, get every, give it, get as much oil out of it as you can. So you just take the drain plug off and let it, let it drain. Again, if you're, and this is only for the SRT supercharged models. It's not for, not for the uh, 5.7s or the 6, uh, 6 4 or the SXT. This is an approved Mopar filter. Is I believe it's an SRT filter. I'm gonna take it out and look at it. Uh, yep, it's an SRT filter. And Amazon sells this as a kit. Like they say, the filter, filter and the approved. 040 SRT formulated Pennzoil, uh, seven quarts for the 6.4, uh, I believe the 5.7 and the 6.2. So uh, all of those models take seven quarts. Maybe the 5.7 take a little less, but it's seven quarts, definitely for the SRT model. Well, you Hellcat owners, something I found out is I'm gonna try to get a good shot of it. The I have a wrench hanging off of it, but that drain plug that's in there and it's on the passenger side of the car. So your oil cooler drain plug is on the passenger side of the car. You can't miss it. It looks exactly like the oil pan drain plug. So I actually ended up using my my impact wrench or my impact driver. Uh, I turned it all the way down. Uh, the cool thing about this, it's got settings on the top of it. So I turned it down to two and 
tapped it a couple times and the drain plug came right out. So I would not, definitely not use this to put the drain plug back in there. I'm gonna do that by hand. But it was, it was taking quite a bit of pressure to try and break the drain plug. And I didn't want to try to tap it with my mallet like I do on the oil pan because the oil pan is pretty solid. It doesn't move. I didn't want to tap it with the, with the rubber mallet. So uh, some precision torque did the job for me. All right, so I'm about to put the oil cooler drain plug back in. Uh, that's that guy right there. It's a pretty big drain plug. I don't know why it's so big. And something I've learned over the years that when you're putting these plugs back, take take a little bit of fresh oil. I don't know if you can see in the view. I'm dipping my finger, dipping my finger in a bottle of the new oil take some fresh oil and kind of run it around the grommet, the rubber grommet that's around the head of this bolt. And then insert that into the line, screw it in by hand. And the head of the bolt is a 15 millimeter wrench, or the size 15 millimeter. Screw that in by hand. Let's see. Shop towels. See, this is why the shop towels come in handy. Grab shop towel. Dry the oil off that you just put on your hand. Take 15 millimeter wrench. Tighten. And take your adjustable wrench. Hold the line and snug. So don't don't want to really torque on it. Just kind of snug it up there. All right. So I'm about to put the oil filter back on, and there's a couple things that I've learned that you should do to it. Uh, one thing I'm gonna try to do this one hand. One thing I've learned is that you should. coat the grommet here in order to get a, a better seal. The other thing I've learned that you should do is pre-fill the filter. So I've, I mean, I've read it both ways. You don't have to, uh, it's a good idea to do it. Uh, but if you think about it, as soon as you cut your engine on, the pressure from the engine shoots oil down into the filter. Whether that causes any damage to it or not, or ruins its integrity, I don't really know. I, I mean, I doubt it because that's what it's made for. But uh, as a kind of a, I guess maybe it could even be a superstitious, superstitious precaution kind of just pour some oil in there before you put it back on so that when that pressure shoots into it there's already something in there to kind of relieve the pressure now that I got everything reinstalled so when you get done underneath the car you should have three things installed if you have a Hellcat but all the others it should be two things so your oil pan drain plug got to make sure that's back in your oil filter for sure got to make sure that screw back in for your Hellcat owners you want to make sure that your your oil cooler drain plug is reinstalled so I got all of those things back in uh, and we're hand tighten everything don't torque on any of that stuff because you don't want to screw up the threads in there but now that all of that stuff's back in it's time to fill the engine So while I was putting the splash guards back underneath the car, 
I noticed that one of these one of these plastic grommets was missing. So I came to my grommet kit and this is something you can purchase on Amazon. And the reason why I got this is because I break plastic grommets all the time trying to get them out. So I went I went to my kit and I found a grommet that looks exactly like the one that is missing and I'm going to put this back in its place. Before you put the splash guards back underneath the car, it's probably a good idea to start the car after you got all the fluids back in to make sure that you have no leaks. Alright, before I finish this video, I, I definitely want to say that this is not the best video that you're going to find on the internet as far as how to change the oil in your car. The, there's most definitely for sure uh, better ones out there, uh, some of which I've seen myself. I did watch a couple videos before I changed the oil in the Hellcat because I wasn't familiar with the oil cooler and how to get that drain or even how to get to it. And I did find quite a few videos that show you exactly how to get to it. So uh, definitely watch a couple videos. Like whenever I'm doing something, I, I definitely want to get some different perspectives before I tackle that project. So look at some different content before you do this. Uh, I might have missed something in my video, and if I did, there's more than likely somebody in their video that did not miss the same thing. Uh, I also want to say that make sure you put on the, the right gear and you use the right equipment when you are doing maintenance on your car. Things like uh, having, having a, a, a good rated jack, having jack stands to put underneath your car to prevent the car from falling on you while you're under it. Uh, you definitely want to make sure or at least uh, an added precaution is you want to have uh, wheel chalks, which is something that I use uh, from definitely from my days in, in maintenance on aircraft. You never do anything to an aircraft before chalking it and grounding it. So make sure you have the right equipment. You want to wear gloves before you do an oil change. And uh, eyewear, even though I wear glasses, so the eyewear is kind of difficult for me. But if I have contacts in, then I definitely try to throw some goggles on to keep stuff out of my eyes. You don't want to get oil in it, in your eyes. It hurts a lot. Anyway, that's it for this video. I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, hit the, the like button, share, subscribe. And if you want to see some different content, please check out my other videos. Blue Suit Reviews. Stay safe out there.